you, you've been very vocal personally uh, with, with regard to NHS cuts, with regard to Jeremy Hunt. You first came to public prominence, I think, during the, the so-called junior doctor's strike. And I don't want to use a cliche like perfect storm, but, but as you saw those pictures in Italy and you knew what you knew about what had been done to the NHS over the previous decade, well, you could have been forgiven for thinking you were tripping at times. <laughs> yes, but uh, in with a really, really bad, <laughs> bad batch of drugs. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I became a doctor um, around the time we, <coughs> excuse me, um, I became a doctor in 2009 and I can remember things being different then. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that um, the NHS was at a sort of peak of of being well funded at that time, you know, historically for decades there there have been issues with mm. beds in corridors and so on. But in 2009, a lot of money had been pumped into the NHS. And I do not remember seeing ambulances sitting outside the hospital unable to discharge their patients because there wasn't a single bed inside. And I didn't see patients lined up in corridors. But as the years went by, each year of that decade just eroded away resources, real terms, resources across the board. And you started to know that every single winter there were going to be patients lying for hours and hours in hospital corridors outside A&E, all of those things. And prior to coronavirus sort of thrusting itself into the world's consciousness in, in January, February time, I was already anxious because my fears were how bad is the winter crisis going to be this year? What's it going to be like? And that's extraordinary. We, we, we were used to just gritting our teeth and knowing that there weren't enough of us, there weren't enough beds, there wasn't enough of anything, but actually we, we as a country had voted in a government who was quite happy to, I would say, systematically degrade the NHS in that way. And then to go into a pandemic knowing that your numbers of intensive care beds are so desperately low compared to most other countries in Europe, let alone America, that was really, really frightening because we knew exactly how this was going to pan out and we knew that we were going to be bearing witness to it. We were going to be looking into the eyes of the patients and talking to their families and having those horrendous conversations and there was absolutely nothing we could do about it, except speak out. And you can get into trouble for speaking out, of course. Yes, yeah, absolutely. 